Good evening, everyone. Facebook land. Baxter here with you from Training with Baxter. Welcome once again to my Facebook Live here this evening uh, on this late Thursday evening. And I hope you've had a really good day. I hope you've learned some things. I hope you've shared some things, built some relationships with people, and been able to improve yourself along the way and help others out also. Thank you for stopping by. And this evening I want to talk about something that may not seem relevant to to your business to you, but I believe that it really is, and uh, I'll give credit on that in a few minutes here. But one of the things I want to talk about, if you read the headline, is that warming up is one of the keys to success in your business. And I want to start out by giving us some examples about why this is very much true. And that is that if you ever think about any of the other sports that are out there. Just take baseball, for instance, okay? That if you've got a person about to go up to bat, that you'll see a lot of times they'll show you, unless you're at the game for real and you can see these things, if you're watching it on TV, and they'll say, so-and-so is up next for bat, and he'll be over here in a little box to the side, and he'll have his bat or one or two bats or whatever he's chosen to, and he'll be over there swinging those bats, getting himself loosened up, getting that extra, that weight uh, a little heavy, getting his body used to handling it and holding that so that whenever he goes to get up to the plate that he's got the blood flowing, the juices are there, and he's waiting on that ball to come in and he's able to swing without injury. And he, and he goes into those things and then he's able to take off whenever he makes his hit. If you take tennis, it's the same way. Before they start the matches out there, they're actually out there. Either they have somebody helping them or that's part of their own team as they're batting the balls back and forth real easy. They're not really hitting them hard. It's kind of like, let's just get the blood flowing, get my ankles warmed up as I move back and forth, get the backhand, the forehand, and just get all that where you have an association with what you're about to really go and put all your effort out into it for. An example was given one time about a, a drummer in a band. And that here, that is before he started going on stage, he said that most of the time, whenever you go into a concert, that you the songs, the first two or three or four songs that they play are really not all that good. Even though they've been playing them for years or decades or, or months, whatever it might have been, that because they're not really warmed up, warmed up, that, that's, that those become their warm-up, and so as it goes, then the blood gets to flowing in them, and they get active, and they get more, their voice gets loose, they get comfortable, the crowd's feeling and spirit starts to come into them, and they start to perform better, and so it's because they've gotten warm. Well, this guy that was talking about this said that he had learned to go ahead and do a few things before he got on stage to help get him warmed up so that he was automatically better whenever he started. And so those are some of the things we want to think about. Even singers, you know, before that they go on stage, they go through their little warm-up, whatever it might be, whether it's doing the scales up and down, holding their breath, or, you know, whatever it might be for, uh, for long notes and slow notes and, and, and just taking in more oxygen. And, you know, I don't know what all that they really do because I know that they need their voices operated. Their throat's got to be right. Um, you know, as many of them have... I'd say it was a Phil Collins from years ago that one time put off a concert because he thought he had strained his voice, you know, and so he would not perform. And, uh, and so you, you need to have those things warmed up whenever you go or are about to go on to perform and do something of that magnitude and you want to be your best at it. Now, having said all that and gave us those few examples of things that I think that people really can resonate or associate a warm-up with, asking then, how does this apply to our business, the business of marketing or, or whatever it might be that you're doing, and I'm just going to say marketing because that's what I'm into, and that's what I think that we all are into in one fashion or another, is sales, if you will. And so one of the things that we can do, let me give us a few examples to get warmed up. In this business, you have to do copywriting, or you have somebody to do it for you. You know, it depends on your level and where you are. But that copywriter, if you just say if you're about to sit down and do copywriting, you're about to write a script 
whether it be a sales letter, whether it be an ad, whether whatever it is, two things have to come into play. First of all, you need your mind, you know, and I point to my brain, you know, where our minds are everywhere. But, you know, we need to get the thinking process and the creative juices working. You know, because if you just sit down, people just hit you on the spot and they say, well, what would you do about this? You say, I don't know, I'd have to think about it. Well, you're not warmed up. If you are warmed up, you know, that, and you've seen other people with interviews, that into the interview, if they get asked a question that's right off the cuff, then they have an answer because their mind is working towards that thing. Okay, so if you're copywriting and you want to get your brain warmed up, your mind uh, kicked off, then start out by reading other people's ads that have been written, right? Some that you wrote before. Uh, go pick out some big sales letters that, that have been successful and read through those to get that mind working to see where all the things that happened in it, you know, would have been true. And then, if you're physically writing, whether you're, uh, if you're going to physically write, get you a pen and paper and sit down and write these things out, which is really helpful if you do, then you want to have your hands warmed up. You want to have your muscles warmed up. And so you may do some stretching on your fingers to get it back and forth. I know that when I sit down a lot of times, if I'm going to write something out for a while, if I'm going to be there a little while, the hand starts cramping and you put the pencil down and you start pushing them back and you start doing this, you know, to get the things loosened back up and you pick the pencil up and you go back to it again. If we do that in the beginning, that helps to eliminate some of that. I've also found that if you're going to be sitting down while you're doing the writing, one of the things you might do to keep the blood flowing or get the blood flowing is you might indeed do a few push-ups. You might do a few squats. You know, it depends on what you're capable of doing, but do some kind of movement. It might even just simply walk around the block or walk around the room to get the blood operating top to bottom in your body so that your whole being is warmed up as you sit down to take care of those things and to write those things out on your paper. And now, next, if you were going to do, so I've covered a couple of things. If you're going to do copywriting and the brain thinking, you've got to get that warmed up. If you're going to do writing with the hand, you know, get those things warmed up as well so that as you're working, you don't have to stop as often to get rid of the cramps or whatever you might have. And then, and even if you're going to use a keyboard, the same thing, you've got to get them warmed up because, you know, when you start out, if you've ever noticed, when you start out typing, you're fat-fingered and making a lot of mistakes. Once you get into that for a little bit, you'll find you make less mistakes because you're warmed up. Your fingers are, have the eyes in the end of them. They're not starting to know where the keys are better. And you start doing a better job at typing when you're warmed up. Get warm before. Now, just suppose that you're going to get before a camera, such as I am here this evening, whether you do a Facebook Live, whether you're going to do a regular video, whether you're going to get before an actual audience, you know, and all those things tend to make us nervous and give us a little bit of a scare, and you get lumps in your throat and you hang up, you know, and different things like that. So one of the things that you might do is to actually go over your script, rehearse it, get out there and practice the saying of it. And if it's a long one, you know, you, you might not do the thing, the whole thing, because you don't want to wear out your voice, but you do want to kind of review it. You want the, to get the vocal cords operating. You want to get the muscles working. You want to get the facial <laughs> structure operating and your tongue loose from your jaw, uh, from the bottom of your mouth so that you can, you know, say your words correctly and get all the enunciations in and speak faster or speak slower, you know, you, you practice those things so that you know, uh, so that you're warmed up to do that when the time is needed comes to do that. So that's one of the keys to the business that I wanted to cover for us this evening, that warming up in this business, and it's different for different things that you're doing, you have to figure out what you're about to do. In this business, though, warming up is something that is very helpful to you when you actually start to sit down to do what you're about to do. One more thing, if you're about to get on a phone call to, make, to call prospects and to follow up on leads and that kind of thing, if you just start into that, many times you're not ready to talk. So if you have answers to 
uh, solutions or you know that kind of thing uh, to objections that you want to bring out then you might rehearse those a little bit. You might also just hop on the phone a few minutes with a buddy that you know very well that you can throw these, you're about to do something and you want to bounce this off of them and spend that time a few minutes getting used to talking on that phone so that you know, you're know you used to having it or if you've got an earpiece there, you know, whatever it is that you feel comfortable doing that. And I want to say that and that brought to my mind something that I heard many years ago and, and learned actually. And that is in the business of sales, okay? You know, many times we go out and we see people and we have a really tough client and we've been to see them two or three or four times, maybe five or six or ten, whatever it might be, and you just can't seem to get them to purchase your goods or your service or whatever. The best time to go and see that person, again, is after you've made a sale somewhere else. You know why? Because now you're warmed up for the big guy okay so when you make a sale over here immediately leave that job leave that place and go to this person because at that point you're really motivated you're really jacked up if you will you know, because you've just accomplished something good over here because making a sale anytime my friends is a super warm-up for the next one you know, sometimes you can just get on a roll and you hit four or five and go. You know, if particularly if you're meeting knee to knee and face to face, you have that ability to exude this confidence and so forth across the people. And when they see your enthusiasm, then they're going to most likely buy. Okay. And so that comes from because you've been warmed up over here, you tackled the hard one over here, and then it's, it's more beneficial to you. So that was just another thing that popped into my head that I wanted to share with you there. So anyway, there's there's some reasons there, four reasons they're giving you and opportunities to say, I need to warm up before I start. That's a key, one of the keys to your business. Now, there's two more that, uh, that I learned uh, about the, your business that helps you out with these, and that is practice and passion. And if you'd like to learn more about these, head on over to my blog. There'll be a link above this, this Facebook when I get through where you can go over and learn about those two items as well. And I'd like to give credit to the person I heard this from, and this is from Bill Pesco Salido, and I hope I pronounced his name correctly, that he you know, is a very knowledgeable person, and he was doing this on one of his Facebook lives, and I found it to be very interesting. And so, um, But I wanted to bring you my thoughts on the thing, and you know, if you like it, in my blog, I'll share that with you where he is so you can go and listen to his as well. But anyway, my friends, if you found this valuable, please share it with other people. Like I said, click on the blog. Go over to hear the rest of the things that you need to do that are keys to your business as well. Thank you very much for stopping by. Have a great evening, and we will see you next time on Training with Baxter.